Hello RV Pony, I have my rainbow shirt on and Sparkle Dash has returned, so you know what that means. Welcome to a TWT Log Special! Ha! <sighs> Now I don't know whether that introduction was either better than last year or last year was better than this one, but there's a lot to you watching this video. Yes. So this is the season eight half time video. And I must say, what a season it has become. A very interesting season. Sparkle Dash, what did you think of it? I think she said it was good. Yeah, I, I think she said it was very good too. And why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't it be Sparkle Dash? Why wouldn't it be? Yeah, why wouldn't it be? Because this year's season has won, plus uh, some persuasions of um, a friend of mine that I do uh, re reaction videos with, Mark Kaider. Hi Mark. <laughs> this season has won seven, yes count them, seven Golden Applejack episodes before half time. Yes, Spitfire. That's an Academy record. Explain my methods? I don't know. Maybe I was too convinced that the, um, the episodes have won the Golden Applejacks. But um, that is a record anyway. Now this video will be different than last year because as I reviewed on my YouTube page last year's video hasn't had a lot of viewers or any hardly any comments um, this year I want to improve that I want to make people watch this and just comment on what they think of the season and what they think of this year's video. Is it better than this? Is it better than last year's? Or is... Yeah. Is it better than last year's video? Hmm. This year's video will be uh, different. So, let's get started. What a ride we've went through this season. We have met some new characters, and there were a few, <laughs> and a lot actually, because Twilight Sparkle is now a teacher, and she has her own school. And let's just say Twilight School didn't have a very good start because one of the characters was a dragon escorted by Dragon Lord of the Dragonlands herself, Princess Ember. Now I don't know if she forced her to go to the school but, yeah, Ember brung a character called Smolder to Twilight School of Friendship. And Smolder, after a long time of thinking, it took me until the current half-time, actually, 
to make me think that Smolder is my favourite character of the Young Six, I think they were called. Please don't make me remember all of their names. <laughs> Because the weather here in the UK is very hot. It's a heat wave that's been around for a month. But okay, I guess I'll try. Ugh. Silver stream. Yona. Gallus. See? No. They're really too, they're really hard to remember off by heart. It'll take time to remember them all. Now, history has been made again. Not only in the season, but in My Little Pony put together. Because Spike, yes, little spiky wiggy, has wings! Of all the 34 years of My Little Pony 35 years 34, 35 Spike has never ever ever and you can watch all of the My Little Ponies from Generation 1 to Generation 4 if you're brave enough because I know most of the fans don't like G3.5 3 you can uh, you can find out for yourselves that Spike has never ever had wings in his life but now he does how weird is that? how weird is that? now that is just weird Oh. We just never expected Spike the Dragon. Formerly voiced by Charlie Adler, Brian Drummonds, and now currently voiced by Kathy Westlook, that he would ever, ever have wings. That is a shock. And I mean that in a good way. Surprised and shock. And I don't mean the pony surprise, okay? 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 I don't mean the pony surprise. The Pegasus, okay? Who's now in the Wonderbolts, but it was actually a G1 pony. Ugh. Next. The thought to be news of Sugar Mac. Were they on the verge of breaking up? Uh, well, for those who haven't seen it yet, I won't reveal. But I have to watch Break Up Breakdown to answer that question yourselves. But for me, watching it, it was like. Oh no! Oh no! No 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 no! Don't break that ship up! Do not break it up! Seriously! Don't break it up! It was a great ship. It's a great ship. Like... Starburst. You know? Starburst, they're a good ship. Sugar Mac, that's a great ship. Apple Dash, that's a great ship. 
for me. Twydash, that's a good ship. But uh, don't break up Sugar Mac, honestly. Don't break them up. Oh. Now, with Princess Celestia, of all the years of Generation 4, we, from the start, we knew that um, Princess Celestia was just a pony that just sat in a throne room writing scrolls and greeting the, her subjects and just enjoying life in Cantalot, being um, the princess, princess that she is and a great mentor. But now we, we're, we're in season 8. Well, it actually started in uh, season 5 actually. That we are starting to know Celestia's personality. Or should I say, ponyacity. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Or well, Sparrow, Sparrow, if you're watching this, I'm sorry for that part. And I know, it, I know, it was bad. It was awful, but forgive me, please. But yeah, we're we're getting to know her now because we are starting to know her as a prankster, like Sparkle Dash over here. Sparkle Dash, do you want to say hi again? But not as high, like, say hi to P like Pinkie Pie does, you know? Be cool about it. Be 20% cooler. Pinkie Pie, Sparkle Dash. And now, Princess Celestia. They're in the Prankster Pony Club. Yes, just like Applejack joining the Chicken Club back in season seven <laughs> with the likes of Pinkie Pie, Scootaloo, Scoo Scoo Scootaloo and her AJ herself you know like clucking like a chicken on I think Applejack's day off I believe <sighs> but yes Princess Celestia is a member of the Prankster Club. And I think I sort of sort of knew it by Castlemania. Because when Twilight read the journal of the two pony sisters, it was said that Celestia liked to play jokes on Luna. And it, the Hall of Hooves was uh, her favourite part of the castle. But I think there was a slide as well in, in that castle, but I'm not sure. Uh, we are actually starting to see what Princess Celestia is um, offering us now. You know, she's kind of giddy. Just like Pinkie Pie, being really excited that she she is starring as herself in the play about her. And uh, for those of you who don't want me to reveal much about horseplay, you better watch it yourselves to see why that Celestia is like a prankster. Now for the, for those older viewers who are watching this, uh, I think to me, to me, Celestia is kind of like a stalker as well, because on Sweet and Elite, Rarity was starting to write a letter to Princess Celestia, then just like that she just says in near rarity's face might I add now that's a lesson I'd like to hear